Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Koi Bookworm Plays with Yarn podcast. I'm Hannah, and I'm a Jersey girl studying at the University of Liverpool. Welcome back, everyone. It's been a really long time. I apologize for that. Um, I moved and then didn't have internet for a week and then went on vacation. But because of all that, I have a ton to show you. Um, so let's let's get straight into some administration kind of stuff. Um, I have an announcement. I said in the last episode or the la or the episode before it that I was not going to be going to Edinburgh Yarn Festival, but I discussed with my mom and a couple of other people about the class that I'm taking that would have um, prevented me from going to Edinburgh, and I decided to change the course to a different class, um, mostly because there was going to be a very big um, and steep learning curve for the course, and this being my last semester of schooling, I didn't really want to have to deal with that. And also, I really want to go to Edinburgh, <laughs> so <laughs> I will be going. I have a ticket for Saturday. Um, I bought my train ticket this morning, and I will be trying to get a ticket for Friday. Um, I've heard that even if you if you are waiting in line, you can still get in, and so I will be there. And I am so excited to see everyone. Um, also, you may have noticed at the beginning of this episode that I have a logo now! Um, my friend finished the drawing that I requested from her, and I finished the hat that she requested of me, and we did a little trade so that uh, we both got something that we wanted. And I love it. It is absolutely adorable, exactly what I was looking for, and it is perfect. And now, speaking of finished objects, I will go into that. So, as I said, I finished the hat. I don't have it on me. I did send it out, so I don't, um, so it's on its way to my friend. Uh, I forgot to take a picture. There, I think there is one on Instagram, uh, but hopefully... She likes it, and it looks good. I made, I did the sock head hat pattern, and I used leftover yarn um, in Volum Vine Yarns in the Volca base, which is a merino cashmere base in the color Dead Calm, and in um, the Footsie base in the colorway uh, Outlander. Sorry, blanked. Um, so that is on its way to its owner, and I really, really hope that she likes it. I have another finished object. It really needs to be blocked, but I finished it last night, and so <laughs> haven't had a chance to block it yet. And it is the Humbug Shawl by Nordic Stitches. And I did it in the Stranded Dye Works uh, Oasis space, um, which if I have, I think I have the, gotta look in all the pockets. Ah, here it is. The Oasis space is a 75-25% um, superwash merino nylon in fingering weight with a yardage of 425 meters, um, and the colorway is Vintage Christmas, so that's the, let's see, I am filming on my phone instead of my tablet because I realized my phone has a much better selfie camera, and the color is much better, so that's probably what we're going to go with from now on, but I love this, it was such a simple um, work, so Last time I showed it, I was here, which you work it from this spot up. Um, and I think that was about halfway. 
yeah, that was about halfway through. And I finished it up last night. I used a size US 4 needles with um, which were my Knitter's Pride Dreams needles and then for the bind off um, because my bind offs are really really tight I went up to needle sizes and I think that was sufficient for this one um, on my find, find Your Fade Shawl I actually went up like three or four needle sizes I think um, just because my bind off was so tight I have to figure out how to not be so um, tense with my bind off but I really really liked this pattern it worked very quickly and it was very, really really simple and so I had the pattern pretty much memorized by this point and so I was able to work on it when I was talking with people um, the only complicated part got was at the end with this beautiful triangle detail um, I'll show this off again once I uh, block it because it looks not so great right now and I love the color the color is perfect I actually when I was working on it last night I realized it matched um, the pair of pants that I was wearing um, but I really like it because it's this minty greeny blue color with all these speckles of uh, dark reds and greens. Um, and the Progress Keeper is from Beehive Yarns. Sorry, totally forgot. Um, but yeah, I really enjoy it. it. It's a little small at the moment, but I think once I block it out, it'll get to just the right size to be able to wear it like that. Which will be nice because um, I love my Find Your Fade Shawl and it's great for winter because I can snuggle up with it. Um, but because it's starting to get out of winter and become spring, um, I need something a little more lightweight in order to fit under my um, lighter weight coats. So I think this will this will be perfect. I'm really happy with it. I just need to block it. Oh my gosh. I need to get some blocking mats because I don't have anywhere to block it. And I know you don't need blocking mats to block. Like you can use an ironing board if it's small enough. Um, you can use towels. Uh, you can even use your mattress. But I only have one mattress and I need to be able to sleep on that at night. Um, and that I don't have that many towels and the towels that I have are very thin so they wouldn't really hold at all and I tried using um, foam core uh, foam core board for my find your fade shawl and when I came down the next day the foam core had gone whoop so it did sort of block but not really not as much as I had wanted it to so I, I think I'm just gonna take a deep breath and take the dive and buy some blocking mats um, I'll see if I can hit up like a kids store and get the kids ones because I've heard those are cheaper than the actual ones that are marketed towards knitters but I have a lot of stuff that needs to be blocked because um, and I just need to do it <laughs> so that's that and then on to whips. Um, because I finished that, I really only have one whip that I'm wor uh, working on at the moment. Um, sorry, I have to dig it out. And I still have those socks that I'm working on, but I haven't touched them in a while. But I'll probably pick those back up now that this shawl is done. Um, so the next whip that I have is my I Am Groot cardigan by Mary Annarella. And this is where I am so far. So it's a top-down um, cardigan. And I am doing it in blue sky fibers in the 
100% fine Highland wool in their worsted weight, and the colorway is October Sky. <clears throat> and this is where I'm at so far. I'm doing, um, it's said to use size 5 um, needles, but I was like one or two stitches over a gauge, and so I moved up to a size 6. Um, and I think it'll fit, like, it's not blocked, so, but it's already just about reaching my shoulders. Um, I know this is the back and not the front, but I'm not, it you won't be able to see it if I tried to put it on my back. Um, it's got this absolutely gorgeous cable pa pattern, ugh, panel going down the back, and then up the sides it'll have cable panels as well. And I love it. I love it, love it. Um, I do have to, I did teach myself how to cable without a needle. But it's been a while since I've done that. And with the variations a la Russe hat, it was too many stitches to cable without the needle. And so I need to go sit down and figure out how to do that again. Because... Um, most of these are just uh, one by one cables and it takes forever um, using the cable needle and I I forget that I stick it in my hair sometimes and so I'll start walking around with it and yeah but I'm really really enjoying it so far I am slipping the um, edge stitches because I know that I need to pick up stitches and it'll be easier for me to do that. Um, so, yeah. First time doing um, short rows, wrap and turns. So we did that up here. And I think I did a good job with them. I don't see any holes. And they seem to be pretty even. It's really roly-poly right now because it's stuck in it. <laughs> but, yeah. So that's all for whips. Um, I do have a lot of additions to the hoard to show you guys. And that's because I did go on vacation with my mom and we are both knitters. And so we hit up Loop and Lobby and Amy. And so I will go through what I got at Loop and then I will go through what I got at Lobby and Amy. Uh, the first things first things first is I got a tote bag. Um, I think for their tote bags they give them if you buy a certain amount of um, buy a certain amount of yarn. So I got because I bought a lot. I got one. I love it. It's got this like one thick um, band or strap for it. I really like that. It made it really easy to carry. Um, great for groceries. Uh, there's just fuzz on it. And I bought the yarn for this. And there's a lot. <laughs> because this only has 123 yards her skein and the I am Groot cardigan is a long grandpa slouch style cardigan you need a lot so I have 17 skeins this is 15 and then got that one and that one <laughs> um this one's kicked up because I kicked it up when I got back home this one I wound into a ball because I was too excited to be able to start. And so I started it while I was still on vacation. But yeah, there is so much here. And it's really, really soft wool. Um, I don't think it's super wash. Um, yeah, I don't think it's super wash. It's just fine Highland wool from Peru. But yeah, so much. Also, can you tell what my favorite color is? <laughs> I 
I outfitted my um, new apartment as well with some stuff because my I'll do a little talk story at the end to talk about my old apartment but I didn't have a whole lot of like throws or pillows or anything like that to sorry my eyebrows like wacky um, in my old place and everything is blue <laughs> everything is blue it's like can you tell what my favorite color is okay and I also got at loop um, I finally got a gauge thingy measure gate I don't a gauge thing <laughs> I don't know what it's called um, I've been eyeing these for a really long time and I really like the wood ones um, and so I decided to get the big square one so that um, I can measure my gauge with um, this. I did do a gauge swatch but because I'm um, paranoid about not having enough yarn even though I probably definitely do have enough yarn um, I just unraveled it and started this with it. Um, and so this is an addition. I really like it. It's so cute, the little logo. And it also smells like burned wood. And I love that smell. Um, I also got, um, some Addy, ooh, glare. Um, I am not used to glare. <laughs> The lighting in this place is so much better than the last place. Um, I got these needles, but they're the wrong size. Um, I wanted to get a smaller pair of sock needles uh, because I find that if I am not doing some sort of cabling pattern, um, the toe, the toes, and the rest of the socks I wear are very like loose, and I prefer a much tighter sock. And so on the socks, the vanilla socks that I'm working on right now, I decreased the amount of stitches that I was using. I think I did like 54 or 56 stitches um, for the sock and that seems to be working. I'm using a two and a half millimeter, but I wanted to see um, what it would be like with a quote-unquote normal amount of stitches because I feel I have tiny feet but I feel like 54 or 56 stitches is still a really small amount of stitches um, and I'd rather have a slightly denser fabric than a not dense if that makes sense um, but at loop I think my one complaint about loop is the, where they keep their needles it's a very small space and when I was there um, like five people were trying to find needles and I got a little overwhelmed and it was towards the end and we all wanted to go back and eat and go to sleep because it was the second day that my mom was there so she was still jet lagged um, and so I bought a 1.75 millimeter needle because I could not remember if I had if my needle, which is a US one and a half, that's 2.5 millimeters, was a two and a half, a two, or a one and a half millimeter. And so I just went with 1.75. And that's not really what I wanted. I wanted two or 2.25, um, two being the smallest. But I have them. So I can do something with 1.75. Um, it is what it is. And then after Loop, we went to Paris. I love Paris. Paris is one of my favorite cities in the world. I've been there multiple times. And I was super excited because I went to La and Amy. And I didn't get a lot there. I only got three mini skeins for my blanket. Um, and these are what I got. So it is... I don't know. They don't really say what... Um, like what kind of yarn it is. 
they just say 100% superwash merino. Um, but it looks like it looks like they're singles. Um, let me see. It looks like, yeah, it looks like singles. Focus. Don't focus on my face. Whoa. It's not going to focus. But, yeah. So, I got this yellow gold color, which is called Yellow Brick Road. I got this gorgeous blue, if it'll show up. If Come on. It's actually it's showing up pretty much to the color, but it's um called Winterfell and it's this really dark, amazing blue and I love it. I love blue. I love blue too much. <laughs> there are days when I walk out of the house and I am wearing all blue. My coat is blue, my purse is blue, my pants are blue, my shirt's blue, and then I look at myself and I'm like, this is a problem. Which is why when I went to Nottingham Yarn um, Expo, I told myself, no blue. And I think I got one skein of blue, but that's because it was stranded dye works, and I was already planning on buying that colorway. Um, and then the third colorway that I got from Lobby and Amy is Grand Nuage, which is translates to um, large snow, I think. I haven't used French in like six years. <laughs> I studied it in high school and then I switched to Japanese, which was really funny in in Paris. Uh, we went to Versailles and when we were getting off the train, um, you don't, unlike in England where you have to scan your um, card again to get out of the train or your ticket again to get out of the train, um, in Paris you can just walk out, but they still have the gates. And we walked through, and there was a Japanese mom and daughter, and the mom was having a problem getting through because she didn't realize, like, she was trying to scan the ticket, but it wasn't doing anything. And so um, the daughter was like, I don't know how I got through. It just opened. And so I was just like, Iku, 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 like, come, come. Um, and then... I spoke in Japanese to them, and my mom and her boyfriend were just kind of like, yeah, she does that. <laughs> she knows that. I. It's weird. Since I've come here, I think I've used my Japanese more than when I was in Hawaii, which seems really backwards because I went to Hawaii because I wanted to be able to practice my Japanese because there's a lot of Japanese tourists and immigrants there. Yeah, that's just how it was but so that's all I got at La Bia Amy and they gave me a little um little pin yeah. come on focus not on me oh this is gonna be a problem yeah no it's just one face um I'm, I have to figure out how to sort my pins because I actually got have quite a few um, and I put a couple of them on like a cork board that I have but I'm, I've run out of room on that board. So um, I guess it's talk story time because that's all I have. It's a lot but not a lot. Um, that's how I felt about my additions to the hoard. I have a very large quantity of it, but not, but a very small variety. Um, I'm happy. I'm excited for the cardigan. So, talk story. Yeah, I went to uh, Paris for a week, or not Paris, not just Paris. I went to London and Paris and Liverpool with my mom and her boyfriend for a week. Um, that was my Christmas slash birthday present. Um, birthday isn't until February, but they're not going to... My mom wanted to celebrate kind of both in January because um, it's in the middle um, by taking me to London and Paris. And it, it was a lot of fun. I 
I miss my mom now. Um, but I had a lot of fun. We did a lot of touristy things in Paris. Um, but I'm okay with that. But we also did like a lot of just wandering around. Like it was fun to find La Bienemi because it was in an area that was not tourist, not really touristy at all, and you got to see um, just how people live their life there. Um, London was really cool. I actually got to see London this time. Last time I was in England, I saw um, one street of London, <laughs> really, because my friend and I were, we took the train to London and then we're taking the bus to Oxford. And so it, we walked from the train station to the bus stop and that was about it for London. Uh, we found this amazing gluten-free bakery in London. It's called Beyond Bread and it's in the Fitzrovia area of um, London, which is like right above Soho. And oh my gosh, it was so good. They have croissants, actual croissants, like croissants that taste like croissants. They're gluten-free, and I, I died and went to heaven that day. I was just like, I, I'm not, I don't want to leave. Um, I wish there was a place like that in Liverpool. I haven't really found, um, I found lots of places that do gluten-free, but I haven't found, um, like, a specifically gluten-free bakery. I know that there is one that's on the Whirl, but that's a bit that's across the water and I have to make a day of it instead of just being like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm hungry, I'm gonna run down to this place. Um, so, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, new semester is starting, so my, I'm not sure how that's going to affect the um, schedule of this podcast because I still have to figure out the dates for that other class that I'm switching to. Um, and I have to write a dissertation. I don't want to do that. It's 13,500 words. How am I going to write 13,500 words? Whew. Yeah, um, I tend to be too concise with my papers. Um, if I have a word count, I have a really hard time hitting that word count. If I have a page limit, I have a really hard time hitting that page limit because I'm just, I'm concise. And when I try to add fluff in order to hit those word counts or page counts, it just doesn't turn out well. Um, so I'm, I'm both looking forward and not looking forward to the dissertation. Because I like the topic that I'm doing. It's really interesting. But I don't like the actual writing. What else? Yeah, I think that's about it. Talk story. Oh, book. Book recommendation. Um, I have been... I have started reading the Witcher series, um, which is, it's the book series written by a Polish guy, oh my gosh, I can't remember, I can't pronounce his name, it's like Andrzej, I'm not going to try, um, and it's the book series that inspired the game series called The Witcher, um, and it's really, really good. It's translated, so... Some of it is a little um, off, I think, but that's just kind of how translated book series go, I think. Um, that's how it is with Japanese trans um, translations and yeah, but it's really, really interesting and um, from what I've been told, the one of the Polish heads of government um always recommends it because it's very true to their mythology and their folklore um and so it has a lot of really interesting um culture information and so i've been really really enjoying it i'm almost done with it Still haven't finished Oathbringer. I think I've got like 500 pages left. Um, but that is a beast of a book. And I didn't want to bring it. <laughs> and drag it all around London and Paris. And so I brought a smaller book. And I've really enjoyed it. So that is it for 
this episode. Um, so thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed, please like and subscribe. Um, it'll help get the videos out to more people. And I hope you have a good day and happy knitting.